Good morning. It's Reverend Mike Capron from the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park. Um, our Bible text for our sermon today is from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. Here we go. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rapidim, uh, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt in order to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? And then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Sorry, quick tech issue. All right. Verse 1 tells us that Moses' congregation set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. I'm obligated to tell you that desert of sin is just the name of a place. The Desert of Sin, S-I-N, is probably near Mount Sinai, S-I-N. It doesn't have any real relationship with our English word sin. But it sounds good, so I'm going to play with it for a moment. We all start journeying with God somewhere, and a likely starting point is our realization of our sin and how our sin does not nourish us or provide us with what we need. Sin leaves us bereft, in need, lonely, guilty, and afraid. We hear the Lord's voice, and we exit that place. Or maybe we have an alternate starting place. It doesn't start with our sin. It starts with other people's sins. We are oppressed, mistreated, victimized, as God's people were in Egypt. For the people of the Exodus, it was more this second case. They were enslaved. And they experienced the coming of God in their hour of need. And then they heard the voice of God through Moses. They witnessed the power of God in the Exodus, especially the parting of the Red Sea and the flight to freedom despite the mighty army in hot pursuit. They lived, and the army of oppressors did not. They gleefully and energetically followed the Lord's command to move from place to place. Well, they were gleefully and energetic for a while, until they got hungry and thirsty. Read Exodus 16 if you want to hear about the hungry part and how God fed them with manna in the wilderness. But here in chapter 17, the issue is thirst. So they quarreled with Moses. This is more than bickering. Perhaps brought a formal complaint would convey the meaning. They gathered around Moses with angry faces and wagging fingers. Why did you bring us up out of Egypt and make our children and livestock die of thirst? Sometimes when things don't go the way congregations want them to, they blame the pastor. I don't think Elmwood Park has ever done that to me, and I thank them for that. I'm not sure what they expected when I started five years ago. I'm not even sure what I expected. But some things have not gone the way any of us would have preferred. However, many wonderful things have happened that have vastly exceeded any expectation I might have had in 2018. And here's the good news. We aren't dying of thirst in the wilderness. <laughs> Nothing like a little perspective. Huh? <laughs> but it is interesting how an immediate need does rob us of our perspective. Okay, God, you brought all these impressive plagues to Egypt until they freed us from the regime of genocidal slavery and exploitation. And that thing with the Red Sea, which saved us from the giant army, was pretty cool. But I'm thirsty, says the ex-slave munching on some manna. Maybe the manna was dry and they didn't have any coffee to go with it. 
you know, I'm probably being both a little silly and kind of harsh on the Hebrews of Exodus 17. But Moses was harsh too. He replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? So just to be clear, not every argument with every pastor is the same thing as putting the Lord to the test. But this argument in Exodus 17 is. Why is that? The people are so locked into their own need and discomfort that they cannot see anything else. They are essentially declaring that God must perform at their behest. They are declaring that God owes them, which is a complete reversal of the truth. Honestly, God takes it better than Moses does. Moses is at the end of his rope. What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me to death. <laughs> and the Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile and I will go before you by the rock at Horeb. There's a lot of good advice in these three short, or in these short sentences from God. Sometimes leaders are called on to go out in front of the people. Some of us don't like that part. We would rather walk with the people we lead or maybe behind them, making sure nobody gets lost. But there are moments when we are called on to walk in front, to lead the way, to anticipate our obstacles, and to wave for the people to hurry up. The session of the First Presbyterian Church of Elmwood Park has done that this year. Those five elders together with me um, have had hard work to do, and a lot of it has involved being out in front. However, being in front is important, so it is uh, generally best not to do it alone, and that's why I'm grateful for the elders walking with me. But I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say I'm glad I didn't have to do it alone. Speaking of which, we aren't ever really alone anyways. Did you notice the reassurance God gave Moses? The Lord said to Moses, I will stand there before you by the rock. Unlike Moses, we don't find it simple to converse directly and audibly with God. But we can be assured that wherever we go, God is already there. And that is comforting. Wherever we go, God knows where. <laughs> God is already there. I'm making a play on words. We go. God knows where. We don't know in advance, but God does, and God is already preparing the way. Even if we have a moment of thirst or sadness or delay in our carefully laid plans, God is already preparing. It will be okay. Water comes forth from the rock. This is an odd sort of Bible story because when you dig into it, there is so much about it that is encouraging. And yet this story is a byword for human sin and lack of faith. Numbers, Deuteronomy, and several Psalms quote this story in a negative light. When Jesus tells Satan, you shall not put the Lord thy God to the test, he's talking about this story, how the people tested God. Moses renamed the campsite with two words, Masa, which means testing, and Meribah, which means quarreling. I assume they never went back. Hey, let's go back to that camp at the place, you know, where we were dying of thirst, uh, testing and quarreling. Sure, sounds like fun. Not. <laughs> I guess it's okay um, to have some negative examples from the Bible, things that remind us what not to do. So we should be careful when we argue and complain. And when we disagree with people or question our leaders, uh, we should do it respectively, loving the person we're complaining to. Here's the New Testament version of the story of Exodus. It's from James 1.26. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on the tongue deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. For you online folks, I'm going to end the story there. Uh, for the folks in the sanctuary, I'm going to invite them to think of a word that describes their time in our church. If you want to do that, it be interesting to come up with a word for some situation or place um, that you've been in recently and incorporate that in your prayer life. Uh, I commend the idea to you. Um, but God bless, and uh, uh, we look forward to speaking with you next week.